Alright guys, I went bald at a very young age, and recently I've written an add-on which was only intended for personal use, but it's proven so unexpectedly useful beyond what I'd originally intended that I thought I'd make it fit for public consumption, with the hope that the sales generated will cover a hair transplant so that people finally stop chasing me down the street shouting Kojak whilst trying to slap me on the head. And to further improve my chances, I've decided to make my Pixel Modeler add-on 75% off for a limited time. I'll put a link to that in the description below. So the most basic functionality of PowerPaste is that you can paste an image directly into Blender. So if I do Control Shift V, it's going to take the clipboard image, and if we just look in here, it's going to paste it in. So Control Shift V, you can see it's pasted that image in. It doesn't appear anywhere because we've only we've only pasted it into this editor. We can also paste it into an image editor, and you'll see we've got that image pasted in. It hasn't duplicated it because it will recognize that the pixel data of the clipboard matches a previously pasted image. So you won't get duplicate data blocks and you also won't get duplicate files on your computer. We can also paste it into the 3D viewport. Let's choose a more suitable photograph. Right click this, copy the image, and then we can paste that into the 3D viewport. Just turn on material preview. You can see it's created the image plain for us. It's created the material as well. And it's given us various options that we can do such as the scale, the offset, uh, the origin, which we'll come to uh, a little while. You'll see why well, that's incredibly useful. Uh, we can also change the orientation, or we can change it to an empty. So if you want it to be a non-renderable object. I'll delete this one. We'll grab this reference image of a Lamborghini. And I'm going to paste this, Control shift v And instead of having it pasted into the view, I'm going to choose to align it its orientation with the 3D cursor. And you can see it's actually pasted it in and it's based the orientation on whichever global axis I was looking at so that you don't have to mess about manually changing rotations and locations and things by hand. Now we've also got the ability to set the scale and this is in real world units. So if you know the length of a Lamborghini or the reference images, which you usually will, you can put that in there. So if I put the this to 2.2, for example, for Lamborghini, we've got that in. And now we can go into the front view We'll copy this one and then we'll go back in here and I'll control shift V. I'm just going to paste it over there. I just need to put in the new scale for the Lamborghini at the front, which is probably, I don't know, 1.2, something like that. Now we've got that image and we can do the same for the top and bottom as well. And then we'll go into the top view and I'll paste this in control shift V and we'll set this back to 2.2. And you can see it's pasted it the wrong way around. And that's because I was looking in this direction when I pasted it in. If I twist this round and then just modify one of the properties and cancel, it's going to change the orientation for us. And that's all done. Okay, so where I really found this started to get incredibly useful was when I was doing things like creating landscape. We've got the landscape object. And on this, we've got a couple of particle settings so we can emit whatever I paste into a particular collection up here. So let's first go with uh, grass, a right click copy the image, and then we'll paste this in, make sure I've got the collection selected. I'll enable it as well so we can see it. And I'll put the 3D cursor out of the way. Control Shift V, and you can see that's now populated with grass. And if I change the orientation to 3D cursor, it's gonna move that out of the way of the view as well. Right, so we've got that in there. And what we can do now is actually start modifying things like the saturation and the value. So maybe that's a bit too light. We'll turn that down a bit. Somewhere there, a bit too saturated. We'll turn that down as well. And now we can choose a tree collection and we'll grab some trees. Maybe this one, copy the image and we'll paste that in. And now we've got some trees on there. We can change the scale as well. And then we'll change the value. So looking way too bright. Maybe bring the saturation down a bit, something like that. And you can also, you don't have to do these in here. We'll also, in the material, you can do it in there. It will probably be a little bit quicker because it doesn't have to recreate the geometry. Uh, if you do it in there, but you've got the option to do it in the F9 menu if you want to. And maybe we'll choose another tree. So copy this image and then we'll paste this one into the tree collection again. Make sure we select it, Control Shift V, and very quickly modify this. Let's add some flowers in. So into the, we'll put that into the grass collection, that should be fine. Maybe these ones. And then paste it in. And if we just change it to view as well, you can actually see if we turn this on, 
there's a gap at the bottom of the image. So that means that these flowers are actually going to be floating above the landscape. And that's why I've added the origin offset. So if I just bring that down so that the origin, this little yellow dot here, aligns with the bottom of the flowers, that's going to make sure they don't they sort of float above the ground as well. Okay, and then we'll put it back out of the way. Pull that 3D cursor. And now we can see the image. And now very quickly, we've created uh, a landscape, which is ideal for a background, or if you're doing like a, a computer game stuff or, you know, whatever. You can't go too far, otherwise it's going to be obvious it's 2D, but for a background, it's absolutely ideal, and it's a super fast way of doing it. You know, and the quality, depending on the quality of the images you choose, you can zoom right in and it's still going to look pretty nice. We can paste images directly into the node editors, for example, the compositor. We can also paste into the geometry node editor as well. We'll paste this in. It always paste at the position of the mouse cursor as well. And you can see we've got that image being used by this quite simple geometry node editor. And we can also paste into the shader editor, of course. And this is where we get to showcase a massive feature of the add-on. So this looks great. We've got no issues. It's looking really nice and crisp on the base color. Now, the problem is, if I try and use this as the height map for a displacement, just watch what happened. You'll see we're getting all these steps in the displacement, and that's because the clipboard is only 8-bit. So a big feature of the add-on is that we can actually paste in as a 16-bit processed image. So you can't just convert an image to 16-bit it will still look like 8-bit. So what the add-on will also do is process the individual pixels to make sure they're making use of that full dynamic range. So let's give that a try. Control shift alt v this time. This pastes in another one, and this one is the 16-bit. So just keep an eye over here. I'm going to change this image node to use the new 16-bit version. And you'll see, as soon as I click on this, they've all disappeared. So that's a pretty massive feature of the add-on. Another great use scenario is actually using it inside of Blender itself. So not copying externally and then pasting in. We can copy internally and paste in as well. So for example here, I'm using this 3D geometry to try and composite over this 2D image of a kitchen. But the problem is, the mask that I'm generating dynamically isn't quite good enough to capture all the bits that I need of that 3D geometry. And I could mess about endlessly adding different nodes and things over here to try and get the result that I need. But much quicker, is if I change this to be the viewer node, and we'll go into the image editor, you can see we've got the result of this dynamically generated mask. I can now copy this. So I'll copy that image. I'm going to paste it back in over here. So Control Shift V. We've now got the power paste image in here. And if I paste it over here as well, we can replace all this network with this single image. Now what that allows me to do, if we just go back so we can see the entire thing, is change to paint mode, because it's no longer a viewer node, we can actually modify the pixels. As I paint over here, you'll see the 3D geometry comes back over here. So actually modifying that, a dynamically created mask to get the results that I want. And I can very quickly just paint in all the bits that I need, and it's going to come back. And there we are. So I hope you enjoy the add-on. If you can think of any other use cases for it, or additional useful features, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.